What up YouTube? Uh, this is Radio Controlled Chaos, and today we are going to be installing a HP, which is, stands for Hobby People, RC Light Kit into our little silica build. So as you may see, there is no body on it right now. I was, I was going to post a video about painting the body, but it just turned to garbage. Like, the paint I bought was a metallic pearl blue which ended up totally like turning the body into just garbage I mean I don't know if it was the temperature I don't know if it was um, just the way you know maybe it was sitting on the shelf for a little too long and I bought it or something like that but it was just complete garbage it was like literally water in a can and it, it did not stick to anything so um, so the body got screwed up and I had to fix it somehow because I had still some paint still on it so it kind of like tinted the plastic on the body to a certain color which was that blue so what I decided to do was try to get the paint off and there is one way you can get the paint off off these uh, Lexan bodies without ruining the actual uh, body itself and that is by using um, brake fluid and brake fluid is the oil that is in your car's uh, disc brake or uh, you know fluid um, is the fluid that's in a disc brake system you know it's the one that goes to the little master cylinder and all that it's basically dot four or dot three would work dot three is usually cheaper than dot four but um, it's just the difference on the the type of oil for removing paint, DOT3 works just as well. Just soak it overnight, pull it out, the paint comes off. But I will warn you, certain Lexans, it makes the Lexan foggy and starts to dry it out and crack it if you're not careful with it. So I'm going to show you what this uh, silica body looks like. And honestly, I don't think it looks so hot and it's cracked everywhere because of it drying up. So hopefully, you know, you guys can see what I'm talking about. So that's a silica body. I had to go white and black because one, I had to go white because the fogginess would appear any other color. White's the best color to go with, so the fogginess doesn't uh, you know sh show up as much. There are parts where you can still see a little bit of blue here and there, and the hood I had to paint black because it was completely fogged up really bad. So I paint the hood from the outside. This is from the outside, not inside. Um, that painted these guys, you know, all little, you know, gray and stuff like that, the bumper gray. As you may notice, the whole entire front is completely cracked right there. That's because, again, it just dried up and it just started cracking. I was going to do something really nice with this body, but it just kind of got screwed up. So, let me show you the rear. The rear is the worst. I mean, everything's just, whoops. Everything is just gone in the rear. There's a whole entire panel that went there and it's just completely gone. So, what I did is I just said, okay, fine. You know, I'll keep this one as a beater body to go drive around. And I'll go get me a nice body. The one I would also want. So, the Celica was the first choice. But, the second choice was going to be a Datsun 510. Which I got and I painted. And I said, I'm just going to paint this real quick off camera, and hopefully it comes out nice. So I went with just the plain Jane colors. I got yellow and gray, you know. I'm going to put some dots and decals on it. Didn't tint the windows, didn't want to do that. I did backing it black, and you might hear a lot of guys say, uh, for painting your bodies, back it with black as must, uh, uh Sorry about that. As much as you can. Because it just brings out the color of the paint the mo uh, more. So, what I did with it is I kind of went thin on the bottom. Around the wheel well and stuff with the yellow. And when I went with the black, it gave it like a little bit of fade effect. I don't know if you guys can see that. But it's a little bit darker here. And I did that on purpose. I did that because I wanted the car to look like... It was like one of those mad Tokyo drifters, and they've been sitting out in the rain, getting rusted, and 
might have some tire tread still like thrown up and shaved off tire shred thrown on the side of the panels of the car and everything it just looked kind of cool so that's what I did with it I did paint the bucket lights and everything put it all in there so today we're going to install the light kit for it and it sits on this car pretty damn well I mean I really like how it sits I got it really low with the wheels so I mean and it still turns fine without rubbing I don't know if you guys can see that how low I got there the body is like barely touching barely touching the tire and it can turn no problem same with the rear barely touching like the rear is completely tucked in actually the tire so it came out nice anyways so let's go ahead and install the light kit well, I'm going to show you how I took my light wires and all that stuff away and uh, it's a pretty cool little feature that I like to do and you might have seen it in my other cars remember that cars that I showed you about roll cages using the straws well this one I put a small little roll cage in it uh, I put it two beams in the front and two in the rear kind of going sideways um, these are there for actually looks uh, you know stiffen up the chassis a little bit although I mean a uh, plastic sorry about that the little shell and um, also to run your wires through it and what I did is I don't know if you guys can see this but a lot of guys like to use super glue to glue in their lights I use hot glue gun and it works the best um, you can cover it it's waterproof and if you want to peel it back, all you have to do is just heat it up and peel it back. Or you just go ahead and just take a razor to it. Or actually your nail will peel it back sometimes. So basically I put in the front lights. Um, the front has the most lights. The rear has the least. Um, just, you know, normal brake lights, front lights, indicators. And then, of course, you got your little flashers uh, also right here. So basically everything runs through. There's these little clips that give you... And it has 3M glue on the back of it, double-sided uh, sticky tape. What I like to do is I like to peel off that sticky tape and um, put a little bit, dab of glue, hot glue gun, and then put it down so it doesn't fall off because sometimes it does from the dust. So this is all in. Wires are all nice and tucked away. This is your indicator wire coming through. It's going to go up through that um, little tubing of... Um, of your straw and it's going to go all the way up and it's going to go straight into your box and I put my box at an angle because that's where the wires come out of the chassis uh, from the car for me to plug it in so it's a little bit easier for me uh, again on the side and then to hold down the wire along the side of it I just put a little dabs of glue <clears throat> dab of glue and I used to smear it off my finger and it holds up there's another one right there as you guys can see it's just working with it here again you see me throwing the wire through this one tubing and over here too this one has the most wires through it so it's a good amount of wires and you can put a lot of wires through it and if you uh, get caught up on like let's say you have too many wires and you want to throw it in this little tab you know the little connectors holding it and it can't go through all you do is you take a razor cut it open on the back like um, just slice it open with a razor be careful not to cut your wires of course throw that wire through it push it down and either glue it or tape it or whatever but you won't see it through the windows and that's a cool little feature I like to do on my cars so yeah so next we'll put it on the car and we'll show you guys what it looks like uh, when the lights are on okay so now we install the light kit and I'm just going to give you a quick demo of what it looks like so we're going to turn on our radio which is on and we're going to turn on the car And as you can see, these are your running lights. You're going to have um, two sets of white lights for the front. So each set is um, run off a certain, you know, uh, certain little slot in the computer up here. So basically it is it's two here and two here. And these two are just running lights. These two you can also make it, these two you can also make it um, flash or not if you want for drifting. You're going to have your rear lights here. <clears throat> this is the cool part about it. The rear lights actually are dim, but as soon as you press the brakes, they bright up just like a normal car. So I can give you a quick demo of that. 
See, when you press the brakes, it lights up. Let go of the brakes, it dims again. So that's a cool thing, um, cool little feature. And then of course you got your turn signals. And of course the other side that flashes. And you can tune it uh, whichever way you want. If you want it to stay on for turn signals, just solid yellow. Or if you want it to be off and then flash when it turns like which I have. Um, everything's programmable and for 25 bucks you can't beat it. It's a really nice system. I've seen other ones out there that you just plug it in and it's just running lights. There's no, you know, nothing for indicators for turning and stuff. For 25 bucks you can't beat it. It was a good deal. I actually got mine for 15 because it was on sale. Uh, sometimes they sell it, sometimes they don't. So um, it's just, again, whenever you get a chance to see it. They go on sale uh, probably almost every weekend or not. Uh, you got to look at it again. I don't know. And this is the light kit that you would get from Hobby People. This is their brand. It's a pretty nice one. I like it. So, yeah. So let me know what you guys think about this video. Comment, subscribe, and click the like button on the bottom. Thank you.